Hey Grand Archive fans, welcome back to another Grand Archive TCG deck profile here on Main Deck. Today we're going to be looking at a Water Tenoris Neos deck profile. So this is a Guardian deck on the water element, and this one in particular is focused on going to the level 3, playing a slower control game, and then building out a giant army with a few particular gigantic win conditions at the end of the list. It's a little different than some of the Water Ally lists floating around. You know, we've got these lists that are relying on Gildas and a bunch of 2-3 allies and just kind of protecting them and attacking. This one is trying to go late into the game playing a lot of protection and then trying to overwhelm the opponent with the power of Neos. So if you like that style of gameplay, this should be a good deck for you. Let's go ahead and jump into the deck list right now. All right, we have our Water Tenoris Neos list right in front of you here. This will be a fun one to talk about. This one was actually, this has been worked on by, from the main deck competitive team, Corbin, who was tweaking this deck and really enjoyed this late game play style. And uh, we've had a, fun of a ton of fun experimenting with it and testing against other decks in the metagame. Um, we'll go through the material deck as usual, then we'll jump into the main deck and talk a little bit about the sideboard as well. And of course, as usual, link for the deck list will be down in the description below. So go click that if you want to pull the list up yourself and check it out there. So uh, material deck, Spirit of Water, of course, is what we're playing, the seven card spirit, because we want every card we can have. Tenoris level one, if you are new to the Guardian, Tenoris level one is on enter. He gets taunted until the beginning of your next turn, which protects your allies, including things like Academy Guide, which you're going to want to try and secure that card value, something that Water is always struggling to try and keep up with a little bit. Tenoris Might of Humanity is level two. The only thing he does is he gets a big attack. Now, unfortunately, Water's one cleave attack is pretty bad. So Tidal Sweep is not included in this deck. You may find that you may struggle a little bit against wider ally decks and keeping them under control, but we do have some options for protecting yourself and taunting them away to try and let yourself build up. Your goal is just get to three and start to take the game over at that point. If you need to, use this plus damage to get a swing off on an ally that is doing a lot of damage to you, like a Gildas. Otherwise, aim a heavy swing at their face if you can. Try to take advantage of this level 2 when possible, though you really want to get that plus damage buff. And then level 3 Tenoris Genesis Aegis is just going to build that gigantic army, that whole uh, fortress for yourself. He summons three different obelisks, which allow you to... Uh, the Obelisk of Armaments, uh, Armaments allows you to create sword tokens, Fabrication allows you to create Automaton drone tokens, and Protection allows you to prevent damage to your units. Um, and as each Obelisk comes out, uh, you, they get cheaper to activate for each domain you control. These are the only domains in the deck that we're running here today, but uh, it's just important to know how those work because what you're going to want to do is get to that level 3 and then just kind of hunker down and build out that army, protect your everything, protect the game, uh, protect your life total, build out that army, and then start to overwhelm your opponent. We are running a Bulwark Sword in here. Bulwark Sword is, I think, a, still a little underestimated by people, but sometimes just having that three damage swing is huge. If you can't get a heavy swing in hand for some reason, this allows you to do a very big swing with Tenoris uh, level two still, six damage swing. It does cost you two cards to use, but it does have two durability as well. It's a pretty fair trade-off in my mind, and a good thing to get, again, when you have like Gildas's that you just need to get rid of so you can survive the game. Chalice of Blood is a, an extremely popular card in Tenoris decks because Tenoris has so much health. 30 health at level 3, 25 health at level 2, which is as high as some other champions level 3s. The Chalice of Blood is very easy to turn on, especially when you can kind of control your life total with the protection that you get from Obelisk of Protection or the other cards in the deck. So it's a zero cost draw 2. It is just very great in the late game. Grand Crusader's Ring, draw a card. You know, you guys know this one. It's great, great card, great Devalian Relic choice. Nullifying Lantern is here because erupting decks are quite popular. They are really showing up in the metagame a little bit more, and you just you need to have that out for it, especially in water, where you are able to fracturize the lantern and due to layering rules, it maintains its effect. We do go over this in our podcast in one of our podcast episodes talking about that. But yes, if you fracturize nullifying lantern, Instead of losing all abilities, it keeps this ability and loses all any other ones that it doesn't have. Um, weird, weird rules quirk, but completely 100% true. Uh, Safeguard Amulet is here because Xander is a problem, and Rydex are starting to show up a little bit now too, but 
Safeguard Amulet holds Xander off from doing his Poison Dagger plays. It's a very, very nice card to have available in that when you're trying to take the game a little slower in the early game and hold Rai, or excuse me, hold Xander off from destroying you. Scepter of Lumina gives you a lot of extra damage, especially in those water mirrors where you don't have to take a materialize phase to activate it. Instead, you can activate it from uh, from the lineage or from the material deck during your main phase uh, to get that extra damage on your opponent. Very criti critical for getting the edge in on the race on your opponent. Archon Broadsword is a just massive amount of damage in the late game. Um, can create completely game-winning swings. The only thing you have to worry about is interceptors generally getting in your way or things destroying the sword, fracturize on the sword. By that stage of the game, you're hoping you've kind of run your opponent out of things like their Song of Frost and their fracturize. Don't try not to run into those because when you swing with this thing, it is again going to cost you initial two, but it's plus one power for each token you control and you can easily set this up with the three domains as tokens, a whole bunch of sentinel um, of automaton drone tokens from your summon sentinels and this thing will just do a massive amount of damage the cool thing is if it's just an interceptor that's in your way that is why we were playing smoke bombs in here now you can use smoke bombs defensively as a way to protect academy guide if you want to but what you really want to do is smoke bombs your opponent's interceptor so that only units with true sight will be able to be declared as an attack target against it which means that it cannot intercept anything unless the attacker has true sight which is, allows you to ignore things like the opposing Merlin's Majestic Spirit and just swing right through with your massive attack to end the game. So that's our material deck in here. Now going to our main deck. Our main deck is composed of largely uh, allies and then ways to protect them. I normally sort this main deck out a little bit more and I just didn't. It's it's a little less sorted than I usually get it, but it's, it's just... Uh, Colorless cards, norm cards, and then water cards. We'll just go through everything as we go here. But Academy Guide is our first norm card that we're looking at, which is uh, just going to create your make your materialize cheaper. It's going to create advantage for you as you're materializing. So um, when you're trying to level up, you want to have an Academy Guide in play. The cool thing is Tenoris level one gives you taunt, which lets you keep this Academy Guide safe from attacks. Then it's just non-attack sources. And we do have ways just to prevent other amounts of damage or other attacks on the Academy Guide. The longer you can protect the Academy Guide, the more advantage you're going to accrue, especially if you're able to get some of these nice little floating memory cards into your graveyard as well. Um, I think in general, if you can just get this Academy Guide out the turn uh, that you level to one and keep it safe for a couple of turns, you will have a big advantage for the rest of the game. Your opponent's going to be really dying to take this thing out because you it's effectively like you draw a card every time you level after that. Um, which is a very nice advantage. Fast Cure, one of our floating memory sources, and a great card in Tony because Tony's going to be taking damage to the face, especially when he taunts things, so you're going to want a Fast Cure. Water is a great Fast Cure player because Water doesn't have that sort of natural card advantage gaining, so Fast Cure is going to be more often a recovery for, um, but don't be afraid to just toss it as a floating memory if you have something that you are afraid to lose instead, but, I mean, try and get value from your floating memory when you can. That's one thing that people really need to work on is not just tossing the floating memory at the first chance. If you can get value from it, that's often better. Just use your judgment. We have four copies of Heavy Swing. Heavy Swing is a massive amount of damage and you often play it in these Tony decks just because the amount of damage it does, it just closes games, uh, shuts the door before your opponent realizes it's going to happen. Great to have sources to use Tenorus Might of Humanity with, and this is an incredible 9 damage swing. The opponent gives you that opportunity where they don't have anything to interact, don't have a Song of Frost or something to stop your attack. It's very hard to justify not getting the heavy swing in to crack in for the damage, especially with the amount of health that Tenorus is sitting on already. He's usually going to be okay. Stalwart Shieldmate, another floating memory option, and a taunt. Just going to keep your other units safe your other units safe, including Tenoris. Stalwart Shieldmate and Academy Guide are best friends in the world because they have to attack the Stalwart Shieldmate before they can even dream of going to the Academy Guide or find a way to rest it to turn the taunt off or something. Be aware though, be aware that two taunt sources are both viable targets for attack. So if you're Tenoris level one, the turn you level, he gets taunt for the turn and you put a Shieldmate down, the opponent is free to pick any taunt unit. Um, so they can attack either one that turn in order to get rid of them or, or do damage to your face, whatever they prefer to do. Diffusive Block is in here as a floating memory source. It is class bonus um, that allows you to prevent any two damage that we built to the target unit, which is really nice. It prevents things like planted explosives from taking out Academy Guide. It can, it can actually prevent 
uh, Scepter of Lumina damage, which is really nice too. Just all sorts of little random sources. You can prevent some damage um, when it's key. And then it has that floating memory to, uh, again, you just want to get a little value from it. And then you use that to level up. Um, we don't have a shield in here at all. There were builds where we were messing around with shields, but the shields just weren't ever feeling quite ideal in here. It is just in there as a protective source to keep you alive as you get to that late game. Fracturize is generally a four of in every water deck right now. You want to run this card because... Uh, number one, Fracturizing your Nullifying Lantern is great in the Erupting match, but otherwise, it has so many key targets. Viridian Protective Trinket, uh, Swords in the Lorraine matchup, Guns of the Diana matchup. You might see things like Ventus that you need to get rid of. There's just going to be a lot of random stuff that you're going to want to Fracturize, um, and it has Floating Memory itself. It always feels like it's a pretty good value, and if you uh, really need to, you could always Fracturize... A, something else of your own just to get the plus one card again that's one of the advantages of nullifying lantern being fracturized it's also then can it has reservable so you can reserve it to pay for things as a sort of a pseudo plus one um great card incredible frostbind four of here you especially want frostbind because our merlin matchup is not wonderful and holding a frostbind up to hit incarnate majesty is going to completely change the game for you um so Frostbind, though, is a key card and also very good in that Fire Xander matchup that we just covered last week. Um, Safeguard Amulet, Frostbind, Song of Frost, some of your best friends if you're play facing Fire Xander games. Fire Xander games, play them a little slower, try and control him if you need to, and then just get yourself to the point where you've sort of run him out of steam as much as you can and you've gotten to that late game. Tenoris' advantage is having a huge health pool, makes it just a little bit harder for Xander to close the door, but having things like Frostbind to hit their Rococos when they're going for game, planted explosives when they're going for game, that is also super clutch. Frostworn Paladin. Frostworn Paladin, don't be afraid to play as a 2-3. Don't be afraid to not use that on enter. Now, we do have a bunch of floating memory, so you should be able to get that on enter. It has intercept when you need it, but just a 2-3 three for 3 is sometimes just as good. Uh, use it to hit your opponent's Korhazi Couriers. Uh, sorry, not Korhazi Couriers. Korhazi, uh, Korhazi Arsonist. Courier has stealth. You cannot target that. But Korhazi Arsonist or any other uh, stalwart shieldmates or just things you need to get out of the way if you need to get a heavy swing in. Don't be afraid to play Frostburn and Paladin without banishing a floating memory card, but if you can, especially in the late game, it's especially good then. It's a 3-4 that gives you a card back so super super good value hypothermia we just have a two of it could be more honestly this could this could be more um i could definitely see cutting some of the random protection things if you want some more hypothermias because this is just key for getting rid of arthur's getting rid of gildas getting rid of some things that are just going to ace and protector that are just going to cause you a lot of problems on the board so uh but it's a two of it's fine too it's it's just a one of the kind of one of the standout water cards from alchemical revolution and a card that a lot of water decks should be considering playing because in the current meta lots of targets that you want to hit with this thing song of frost man this card it was good already but it's even better defensively diana's gigantic shadows twin shots rending flames from xander other guardian decks going for gigantic heavy swings or amorphous strikes you want to be able to stop those attacks random ally attacks sometimes as well that you just need to stop um you can use song of frost when they are going to kill your academy guide if it's going to be very important that you save it probably less common you're going to want to do that than hitting the game ending attacks but um additionally don't forget the key the, the little trick the little trick that that doctors don't want you to know about song of frost is that you can attack with one of your small units take one of your little your little like uh, vapor jet shield bearers or something attack for one with that guy. And if the opponent plays resolute stand or a card like that is a card that prevents damage the whole turn or something you can with that resolute stand on the stack, you can song of frost end the combat phase of your own attack, which will then banish everything on the stack before it resolves banishing that resolute stand. So it no longer resolves. So you can use that to bait out the stand and then Song of Frost it if you're going for lethal that turn. That might be critical for you to get an attack with like a Frostworn Paladin and then a heavy swing to deal enough damage to win the game or your Neos Elemental or something. So remember that that is always an option, the, the offensive Song of Frost play, but a lot of the time it's there as a defensive tool for sure. Storm of Thorns, a card I super underrated in Guardian's package, but... This card, make sure you read it correctly. It does have floating memory. It is fast speed, of course, two cost. If damage would be dealt to a unit you control this turn, 
prevent one of that damage. That is not the next source of damage. That is every source of damage on all of your units. You prevent one of that damage. That prevents a good amount of damage from the Xander swings. Um, and it deals one damage back to everything that attacked that way. So if it's like a, if there's like a raccoon that attacks, it's going to die from that. Your opponent attacking with their champion is still going to take a damage back. That damage back isn't that important, but the one prevention from everything saves you a surprising chunk of damage and makes it harder for them to kill Academy Guide, uh, makes it harder for them to get through Stalwart Shieldmate. Sometimes that's really clutch. If you have a Shieldmate in play, and they start attacking with a couple of small things, and you Storm of Thorns it, you can totally screw up their whole turn. Um, you can end up like, they attack with a Clumsy Apprentice, you Storm of Thorns, now the Clumsy is going to do no damage and die. Shieldmate is two health with a one prevention shield on every source of damage dealing to it that turn, and you have a floating memory from that too. It's sick, it's sick. Super, super sick card. Vaporjet Shield Bearer. Now, this card is interesting. It's very efficiently costed, and it's sort of an unassuming card, but it is a two cost, 1-3 with Steadfast. This ally can retaliate while rested and doesn't rest to do so, and has class bonus on hit. That's whether it's attacking or retaliating. Look at the top card of your deck. You may put that card in your graveyard. So this guy can generate value for you. Again, Floating Memory, Fast Cure, Stalwart Shieldmate, Diffusive Block, Fracturize, Storm of Thorns, and we haven't talked about it yet, but Wave Rider Protector as well. We are looking at a massive amount of floating memory in this deck right away. And you are going to be able to hit that not infrequently. You're going to find about one in three times, more or less, you are going to find a floating memory with this and generate again, generate that value so that you can get to that level three with a lot of cards in hand and, and be able to play out all your really cool Neos cards. So um, really sweet, unassuming card, and the, just the two costs for what you get here is super, super good. They try to attack it to get rid of it. You get to get that retaliate, and you can get another on-hit trigger, possibly even two. If they, the only way for them to take it out is with two attacks. That I mean, you get to retaliate each time and get that. Uh, the damage might not matter, but the the on-hit certainly can. Wave Rider Protector, also excellent card. Now, a little more expensive, four cost for a 1-4 ally, but it has Taunt and Floating Memory. It's like a super stalwart shield mate. It's twice the cost, but it has double the toughness and it has uh, one power as well. So, um, very cool. Now, the Floating Memory is class bonus. You have to keep that in mind. Make sure you're watching out for your class bonus Floating Memory, but really sweet card just for holding on the fort. Four is a lot to get through with random allies, so she can definitely hold off a lot of damage, and then especially when combined with something like Storm of Thorns. Um, if you're going second, you go, you know, Wave Rider Protector with Storm of Thorns. You're not going to have the taunt right away, but if they don't take it out then, you are going to have a lot of, uh, if they don't take it out then through the through the Storm of Thorns, then you're, they're going to have to do it later with the taunt active. So, Really sweet card. These are, you can just see all these different ways that you're going to kind of set up roadblocks for your opponent, slow your opponent down. And the reason we do all that is we get to that mid game, maybe get a heavy swing off, get some attacks off with Frostworn, get to that late game now, Amorphous Strike, four damage attack for three, on attack, banish attack card from your graveyard. You can banish this heavy swing right here. Great choice for that. And it's going to get plus X damage where X is the banish card's power, plus X power. So it's going to end up being a 10 power attack with banishing a heavy swing. Uh, 8 power attack if you banish another Amorphous Strike. Take that 10 power attack, add on uh, 3 power from Bulwark Sword, add on a lot of power from Archon Broadsword. You, this is this is a game-ending attack again, and the reason we're playing things like Smoke Bombs, and the reason you want to use your allies to try and clear out taunt targets and other interceptors when possible. And it's the reason you want to bane out things like Resolute Stand with this Song of Frost offensive play so that you can get that game-ending damage through. It would only prevent three, but sometimes that does make all the difference. Now, we played Neos Elemental in here. This is the Ultra Rare in Neos. It is a 10 cost, but it, don't worry, it's not going to be 10. That costs one less to activate for each token object you control. You can get up to three tokens alone from Genesis Aegis, and then we are going to play other ways to get a bunch of drones in in addition to these obelisks. Once you get a good chunk of tokens out here, this thing starts costing five, four, three, and then it gets plus one, plus one for each token object you control as well. So this thing ends up becoming six, seven, eight power. It has steadfast, so it gets to retaliate while it's rested. It has taunt, so while it's awake, you have to attack it. It has true sight, so it can attack whatever it needs to, and has vigor so that it will ready at the end of your turn. It has hindered, so it does come in hindered. Right, so you're gonna put this down. It's gonna be, let's say, it's like a six-six or something. 
You put this guy down, hindered at the end of your turn, it wakes up. Now it is a 6-6 taunting your opponent that can retaliate at anything that attacks it. And if your opponent tries to attack it with something else to try and get it, it can keep retaliating with that steadfast. If your opponent doesn't get rid of it on the next turn, it gets to attack and then taunt up again, vigor, vigor to awaken and then taunt your opponent on the next turn. And each token you get to play makes it stronger and stronger. If you get to play this for pretty cheap, you still can use your things like your Song of Frost to protect, your Storm of Thorns to prevent damage to it. This thing can be an absolute house, but it is very expensive. So it's just a two in there. You want to just find one copy at some point, if you or find Amorphous Strike. One of these options really to close the game. Um, provoke Obstinance. Now this is a really great Neos card that is super, super flexible. Three cost card with whenever you activate it, if there's exactly one target for its activation, you also get to draw a card in your memory, so it replaces itself. Otherwise, you're going to get to target up to five objects. Objects, okay? That can be your champion. That can be your allies. That can be your obelisks, your domains. That can be your Archon Broadsword. If your opponent goes for the Fracturize or the, or the Meltdown on your Archon Broadsword, you can give it Spell Shroud so that it can't be targeted. And then if those were units that you target, you also prevent the next two damage from any source that we would be dealt to each of those target sisters. Now it's just the next instance of two damage. It's not really, really cool like Storm of Thorns, but it also prevents some damage to it. So like this can keep your Neos Elemental alive. This can keep your broadsword safe. This can prevent Rai from destroying you that turn with that spell shroud um, and even prevents some damage from things like Erupting Rhapsody. You know, it's, it's a, really a catch-all card. The three cost is quite a bit to keep up, but that's why we are playing all these ways of trying to generate value using floating memory, using Academy Guide. Um, and that allows you to hopefully get to that late stage of the game with enough cards in hand to be able to start building your board out and keep an obstinance held up. Finally, summon Sentinels. And this is really that way that we're going to build that army up without spending too many cards. Costs one less to activate for each domain you control, so you really best case scenario you get to use this once you get your third domain down it is one cost to summon two automaton drone tokens one one tokens and put a buff counter on each of them so it summons two two twos those tokens then are going to buff up archon broadsword they're going to buff up neos elemental and otherwise just going to be two twos they're going to be threats two twos are threats uh, in grand archive two twos are just fine they're going to do a lot of damage easy to kill but lots of damage on their own um, it can put a lot of damage out out of nowhere and it can then buff up everything else you're doing and it's quite cheap to play so it kind of works with everything and we have four of that in because it's kind of the linchpin of getting that late stage building out domains and then building out that army so if you like the style of gameplay where you're trying to control the opponent in the early game stop them from dealing damage take out their key threats get to that late game nice healthy life total healing yourself with fast cure protecting yourself with taunt protecting yourself with intercept and then just taking the game over with a massive army and gigantic i mean absolutely you can you can swing for your opponent's entire life total it's quite possible to set up uh with this but more likely you're gonna hit something like 10 damage 12 14 16 um depending on what you put into it that should be plenty especially if you hit them with a heavy swing earlier in the game to end the game right there this is the style of deck that you will enjoy playing if you like all of that kind of stuff now sideboard wise we do have a few options to look at um again i always say this sideboard should be tweaked for your local metagame what you expect to see what we are expecting a lot of are things like other water decks of viridian protective trinket is very good because your opponent is going to try to song of frost your gigantic attacks viridian protective trinket will make that song of frost cost two more so they can't necessarily easily keep up the amount of cards they need to be able to use it it also makes their fracturized cost more for trying to keep your lantern safe just a clutch card super if your opponent has a reading protective, protective trigger play you need to fracturize it as soon as you can um, another option for your sideboard if you want to if your opponent if you're if there's a, is a lot of water and you want to tech against that we're running three lunette in here though because ally decks do get very scary right now there are a lot of powerful ally decks and siding these in can give you a big edge make it very hard for them to keep up and give you time to attack their allies back and take them out before they can start to attack with them still water patrol is in here as a two of it is a decent card to side into a few matchups against wind with dream fairies taking out those dream fairies will allow you to protect your steadfast or your academy academy guide excuse me um, as well as things like your Frostborn Paladins that are probably easy targets for Dream Fairy. And then again, Xander. Xander runs so many stealth allies. So Stillwater Patrol is a nice little option if you want to play that board 
uh, control game against him and just keep clearing. Now you can clear those Korhazi couriers. Easily clear Korhazi Arsonist, even if he has the, the prep counter to stealth it. Um, very sweet card. And then we finally we have the fourth copy of Provoke Obstance because there are going to be some matchups like Rai where you just, you need to see this card. That's how you save yourself against it. So side that in and then you will have more options to side out some of the stuff that is less useful in that matchup. Um, things like Diffusive Block are really going to depend on, on the matchups you see. Not necessarily always great. Um, Fracturize usually is a pretty good card. Hypothermia, Rai doesn't care about this at all. Take that out. Put put in the Provoke Obstinance for that instead. Uh, yeah, there's so definitely some stuff you could toy around with here a little bit, depending on the matchup. But that's the current cyber we have, and you can totally tweak that however you need. Um, but that is our Water Neos Tenoris deck. I hope you guys enjoyed that deck prof profile. I hope you find it an interesting new deck to explore. And if you like the slower Water Guardian playstyle, it is probably the deck for you to try out. If you do try it out, let me know how it goes down in the comments below. We'll have a more Grand Archive deck profiles coming, especially next week. We're going to start showing you Nationals decks. We have been testing a lot, a lot of Nationals decks, and we're hoping to be able to tell you about some of the ones that we've been trying and some of the ones that we found some success with. So we'll let you know as soon as that happens, but we'll be back next week with that video. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.